You know, it's a collision of factors that's led the United States government to put young people at the very top of its agenda everywhere that we do business around the world. It's demographics, where more than half of the world's population is under the age of 30. Um, but it's more than that. It's a collision of those demographics with an unprecedented access to technology um, and with globalization that, yes, has allowed young people to transform political realities on the ground, sometimes very much for the better. Um, allowed them to be champions of good governance, of democracy, of things we all stand for, um, and to, as entrepreneurs and innovators, be a backbone of economic growth all around the world. Um, but we also see, as a result of those colliding factors, um, a mismatch of expectation and opportunity all around the world, where young people grow up with unfettered views of good governance and transparency and economic opportunity that very often isn't present within their own borders, within their own communities. And that's especially true for the 90% of that majority under the age of 30 all around the world that is in the developing world. Um, so in those cases where there is that mismatch and that frustration, um, you see young people as uh, a ripe target for recruitment by extremists and criminal groups um, and a source of, of instability um, that can be at the heart of many of our shared challenges. So it was a recognition of that double-edged sword um, and of the need to tap into the tremendous positive potential that youth holds for all of our challenges. Um, and the fact that I think we avoid doing so, in the words of Secretary Clinton, um, at our own peril.